fear, real or imagined, can be crippling. And everything that we want in life is on the other side of that fear, our passion and our goals. So my name is Dr. Rob Bell. I'm a sports psychology coach and mental toughness expert. And this is No Fear, a simple guide to mental toughness. Now I've worked with champions at all levels. And whether you're a coach, an executive, an athlete, or even a corporate athlete, I think everybody's an athlete. Our office is just different. So what is mental toughness? Mental toughness has two components. One, how do we perform well under pressure? Everyone can do it in practice. How can we perform well under pressure? Second part about mental toughness is how do we deal, how do we cope, how do we handle the adversity, the setbacks, the roadblocks? How do we handle that? It's all mental toughness is. The importance of mental toughness is the hinge. Every single one of us is getting ready for that one moment that one person or one event that's gonna make all the difference in our lives. It's gonna connect who we are with who we become. We just don't know when that's coming. No fear, a simple guide to mental toughness. No fear is an acronym. Each letter represents a specific mental skill that we need to address. And this is a simple guide not an easy guide. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Two mice fall in a bucket of cream. The first mouse quits kicking and drowns. Second mouse keeps kicking, keeps kicking, turns that cream into butter, walks out. The end, never ever give up. It's the basis of all mental toughness. And you've heard this before. Jim Valvano, Winston Churchill, never give up. And we're never gonna give up in our passion, our why. Our why has to make us cry. If it doesn't, it's just not our why. So if we're passionate about it and never ever given up, here's the importance of it, is I've worked with successful athletes, professional golfers, and no matter what level we're at, we all quit. You know when we quit is when we start going through the motions or when we say to ourselves, this really doesn't matter. So when do golfers on the PGA Tour, when do they quit? Because they're never gonna go through the motions when they have a chance to win the tournament. They're never gonna quit when they have a chance for a top 10 finish. How do you act when you're not in situations where you can win? So golfers on the PGA Tour, when the best finish they can get is 40th place, they'll go through the motions. The difference between 50th and 40th place is insignificant. You know when else they'll quit? They will go through the motions in practice. They will say to themselves, this putt or this shot, it really doesn't matter. It's practice. And you know what? They're right. In our own lives, this call or this person that we meet really isn't that important. It means we're going through the motions. And you know what? You're right, it might not matter. But here's the real importance of it, about never ever giving up, is the first time we start going through the motions, the first time we quit or we say to ourselves, this isn't that important, it makes giving up easier later on. We've allowed that to become an option for us. It's part of our arsenal, it's an excuse, and it makes giving up easier later on. The hinge can't connect that way. The end, the basis of all mental toughness, never ever give up. So the oyster 
lives inside the shell or a mollusk. And the shell is designed to do one thing, not let anything get inside. But what happens is one grain of sand will get inside that shell. And the oyster will do whatever it can to get rid of it. So it works on it and works on it and works on that one piece of sand. And you know what happens? That grain of sand turns into a pearl. What's the O? We need to take our obstacle and turn it into an opportunity. The obstacles, the roadblocks, and the hurdles exist for a reason. They're meant to be there. They want to see who really wants it. How bad do you want it? Now here's the thing about obstacles, is we need to take our mess and turn it into our message. We've got to take our test and make it our testimony. They are meant to be there. It's just how we respond. Now the really, really successful people, they've all said the same exact thing. They were told, there's no way you can do it. You're not gonna be successful. That's a bad idea. And they used that obstacle and turned it into their opportunity. So why are we here at Nice Hockey Arena? Chris Chelios, Hall of Famer. He was a teenager and he was just cut by his second Junior B Hockey League in Canada. He's at a Detroit bus stop with no fare to get back home. That wasn't gonna be his hinge moment. Why do we know who Chris Chelios is? Because he turned that obstacle into an opportunity. For every Chris Chelios that you hear of, there's a thousand people that never make it. Their obstacle becomes their hinge moment. No grain of sand, no pearl. So the samurai takes two students to hunt. Ask the first student, what is it that you see? First student says, I see the trees, I see the leaves, I see the owl, and I see the eyes. He asks the second student, what is it that you see? The second student says, I only see the eyes. What's your target? Focus. Ed Moses qualified for the Olympics in 2000 in this pool. He ended up going to the Olympics in Sydney that year, winning a gold medal. And when I would talk with him about his focus, it was amazing. He said, I had a goal for every practice. Like, wow, Ed, that's pretty impressive. He said, in practice, when the, when the coach would say what the set was gonna be, he would have a time that he wanted to hit. He knew his goal. He used to move the clocks so he would see, he was a breaststroker, so when he would hit the wall and turn, he would see what his time was. Focus is the F. Now confidence is king, focus is queen. We can't win the game by moving our king in chess. We have to win the game by moving our queen. But have you ever heard this before? Run your race, stay in your lane, play your game. Comparison is the thief of joy. What happens when we lose focus? We start paying attention to what other people are doing, what our opponents are doing, what the competition is doing. It starts dictating our own actions. When it comes to focus, we've got to have a goal for everything we're doing. We've got to have a target for everything that we're doing. Hyper type of focus. Take one task, focus on that. Or do we get distracted? We start paying attention to people behind us or the people around us and what they're doing.
So you have focus and then you have refocus. It's the second most important mental skill because it's the second most difficult. Dan Jansen was Olympic speed skater. In 1988, he's favored in the 500 and he's favored in the 1,000. He goes to the Olympics and he doesn't medal. That's four years of having to wear that mistake. 1992 comes, he's favored in the 500 and he's favored in the 1,000 and he doesn't medal. 1994 comes, he's favored in the 500, he's no longer favored in the 1,000. 500 comes, he goes out and he races it and he finishes eighth. Why are we in the locker room? Because Dan Jansen was in the locker room on the warm down bike and his coach comes up and he talks to him and says, Dan, he says, it sucks. But you gotta let it go and you gotta let it go right now because you got the 1,000 that's coming up in two days. Dan Jansen goes out to talk to the media, says, I let it go on the bike. I'll talk to you after the Olympics. His very last Olympic race, he wins the gold medal. How do you let go of mistakes? How do you refocus? What's your locker room look like? What I think we have to do is we have to come up with a physical refocus strategy, a physical refocus cue, something physically that we do to let go of that mistake. SEC officials, there's about 180 plays in a game, give or take, and they've never caught a perfect game. What do they do when they make a mistake? They train their officials. Take your hat off, put your hat back on, get big, and get in your power position. And that's all with Nick Saban in their ear, knowing that they made a mistake. Because the most important play, the most important game, it's this one. 60 seconds that we spend thinking about the mistake is one minute lost thinking about the most important play. And you know what happens? When we make a mistake and we can't let it go, it leads to another mistake. Or if somebody did us wrong and we can't let that go, Who's the one paying the price? It's us. Refocus. So when we're driving down the road, the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. We can't be driving down the road looking at the rear view mirror. Refocus. A, it's all about attitude. You've heard this your whole life, being positive, not negative. Attitude's a whole lot more important than that. It goes a lot deeper. So Zach Johnson, coming down the stretch to win the Masters, had a one-shot lead. And they asked him, weren't you nervous? He said something I'll never forget. He said, I was excited. What's the difference between being nervous or being excited. Physiologically, it's the same exact thing. When we're nervous, we're focused on not wanting to be in the situation. Something bad can happen. It's a threat. When we get excited, we want to be in the situation. This is an opportunity. It's a challenge. What's the difference between being nervous or being excited? The brain is a muscle. The more we direct our attitude that everything is a challenge, everything is an opportunity, we're gonna get excited. If we don't wanna be in the situation, we're gonna get nervous. And I hear it all the time. People ask, like, aren't you nervous? Get rid of the word from our vocabulary. We're excited. It's all about attitude. So the last letter of no fear is R. I'm caddying my very first event in 2006 on the PGA Tour. My golfer had played really well. It's the second day of the tournament. We're walking on the ninth green. And I'm really thinking that I'm obviously the best sports psychologist that there is. This caddying is a piece of cake. 
Tiger Woods is gonna be calling me up after this tournament and I get caught up in the moment. We're on the green, he tosses me the golf ball and I grab it and I bend down and I'm cleaning the ball. The ball drops in the back. I reach in, I grab the ball and I toss it to him. He makes the putt. We go on to the 10th hole, we've got nine more holes to go. And this feeling of dread overcame me. And I said, that was a Callaway two blue circle, right? He wants to know why I'm asking. He looks, it's a Callaway four blue circle. So in my haste, I had handed him the wrong golf ball. The rules of golf are very specific. You start and end each hole with the same ball. The rules of golf also say you call all penalties on yourself. We call the rules official over two shot penalty. Now I have made errors before to lose ball games and I've never felt as small as I did at that moment. Imagine the thoughts that are going through my head about how could you be so stupid, Rob? How could you mess up? He doesn't say anything to me for three holes. And on the tee box on the 14th hole, he looks at me and says, Rob, I need you. I need you to be confident here. He said, either you can't do that stuff you teach or you don't believe in it, but I need you. And it taught me the power of the R and the power of the R is this, is respond, don't react. When we react, it's full of emotion. And I think often our emotions are incorrect. Respond, don't react. When we react in traffic, if somebody cuts us off, when we react at home, when our child spills something on the carpet and react, it's usually gonna be incorrect. But if we respond, it means we take a deep breath, we refocus. So the R is all about respond, don't react. Now what I believe is that every single one of us is getting ready for that hinge moment. That one play or one person is gonna make all the difference in our lives and we don't know when that's coming. Because when our moment hits, it's too late to prepare. No fear is a simple guide to mental toughness. Each letter of no fear represents a specific mental skill. All towards the most important mental skill and that's confidence, trust, and belief in yourself and your team because nobody gets there alone. Now what I believe about confidence is this, that it all works out in the end. If it hasn't, it's just not the end. So visit the website drrobbell.com, download the ebook, and pick up a copy of The Hymns, The Importance of Mental Toughness. Hit me up on Twitter, at Dr. Rob Bell. God bless.